Welcome back. In our previous lecture, we talked about uh, s mainly symmetric encryption. Today, we're going to talk about asymmetric encryption, also called public key encryption. Okay, this was an idea that was invented in 1976 by Diffie and Hellman, uh, though in fact, at the time, they didn't know how to do it. They just proposed it as a notion, uh, and then later on, people came up with uh, implementations. Uh, it's called public key encryption or asymmetric encryption, and it turns out that the same idea had been invented earlier by uh, the British equivalent of NSA, though they didn't let anybody know at the time. Okay, so what's the idea? You've got a, uh, a key that you use for encryption, a key that you use for decryption, and you take your encryption key and you publicly dis disseminate that or distribute it, and then anybody can encrypt with that key and send you a message, but only you can decrypt it. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll typically denote the public key of, uh, of a principal A by K sub A and the private key by K inverse sub A. Okay, it turns out that there's at least one public key system, and it may be the only one that has this characteristic, where you can use either key for encryption and the other key for decryption. And so in that case, uh, the, the in encryption and decryption are, are symmetric in the use of the key, though it's still an asymmetric algorithm. That's not true for any other public key encryption algorithm that I know of, but RSA actually is a very widely used one. Okay. The basis of a public key encryption system is what's called a one-way function. That means a function which is easy to compute but difficult to invert. So the, the canonical example of this is multiplication. So if you take two large primes and multiply them together, well, that's easy to do in a computer. You can program a computer to do that in milliseconds. On the other hand, if you take the result and don't know what the original primes were, that's the factoring problem. You've got this large composite number and you've got to figure out what the prime factors are. Well, no one knows how to do that e efficiently, at least not yet. On the other hand, if you happen to know one of the primes, then extracting the other one is easy. That's just division. Okay, so public key systems largely solve what we earlier described as the key distribution problem. You remember what the issue there was. If uh, I want to communicate securely to you, but we don't share a key, well, how do I get that key to you? Well, if we have a secure channel through which I can send the, the key, we don't need the key. But if I don't have a secure channel, well, how do I get it to you? Well, the issue, the issue is solved with public key encryption to a very large extent because now I can give you this public key, and it doesn't matter if somebody else overhears that or eavesdrop because now you can encrypt with that key and it doesn't have to be secret, but no one but me can decrypt because only I have the private key. So if that's the case, why don't we just use uh, public key encryption all the time? Well, the answer is, uh, if you remember when we talked about AES and the other symmetric algorithms, those used very efficient um, uh, machine operations like bitwise operations and arithmetic operations, which are very efficient to implement. Uh, public key encryption systems, on the other hand, require things like factoring and uh, uh, modular exponentiation and things like that. And so they're much less efficient to implement. It turns out that public key encryption may take 10,000 times as long to encrypt a message as symmetric encryption. And for that reason, symmetric encryption is still the workhorse of commercial encryption. Okay, so what have we said? Well, devising one of these asymmetric algorithms means finding one of these um, one-way functions which are easy to compute but hard to invert. And any time you have such a function, you can come up with a corresponding um, uh, public key encryption algorithm. Public key encryption largely solves the key distribution problem for the reason I just explained. And asymmetric algorithms are not as widely used as symmetric algorithms, except in special cases, because they're much less efficient than symmetric algorithms. Thank you.